Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Now we are going to be installing a new, well, new second hand high pressure pump in this 2007 Freelander. Now it's not the Freelander you're used to, this is 2007, um, but this is still uh, the Freelander 1, not the Freelander 2. TD4 engine and how do I know we need a high pressure pump? There's no point getting any diagnostic tools out for this one. It won't start and the pump is leaking. Now, there could be other issues, but we first need to put a new pump in or a second hand pump. You can't see, but when, when I remove all this, I'll show you down here. As soon as you start cranking, the pump's just spraying out loads of diesel. So, we need to remove a few things to get this a lot easier because we will try and show you right down there you can just see the high pressure pump and this is it close up with only three bolts and a special well no it's just normal bolt but there's a special way of taking this on and off you do need a special tool it is very inexpensive but i would suggest you buying it right as you can see this mess on stephen I'm going to go through all the tools I use to do this job. Some of these you don't particularly need, they just make your life easier. Um, and some of them you do need. First thing, I use my impact um, half inch because it's just really handy. Really, really handy. I used the electric 3 8 as well. We use two long flat bladed screwdrivers, 4 and 5.5. Oh, you can't really see them. There we go. A long half inch ratchet, a long half inch extension, a torch, a mirror, the special tool to hold the pump, pliers uh, to release the actual hose. These are special, and it's just easier to, to, uh, to release the hose. 3 8 ratchet. Flex head, or two, two three-eighths ratchets, both flex head. A knockometer, so a hammer. Pin nose pliers, these are actually called pistol grip pliers, but you know, there you go. Jubilee clip fastener, tighter, tighter, no, 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 whatever you want to call it. What's this? Nine, uh, 18 mil sockets half inch 21 half inch and 22 half inch so the half inches are used and the 17 half inch as well allen key but like i said there is other ways of using other ways of doing that 17 mil spanner 22 mil spanner 13 mil spanner a long 3 8 extension a medium 3 8 extension Phillips screwdriver, what I actually use that for is pulling out a little plug that uh, puts the bolt in to hold the flywheel. 15 mil, that's half inch as well. Pliers, and then we've got 16 mil, these are 3 8 that's a 90 mil it looks like, yeah. 13 mil, looks like a 10 mil, yeah, 10 mil, 11 mil. 15 mil, and that looks like 8 mil, yes, and 8 mil. So that's the tools. I use to do this job like I said you don't necessarily um, need everything it just makes your life easier so what we're gonna do first is remove the whole inlet the EGR valve the pipes here the intake sensor what else we got down there we've got the map sensor down there too uh, the intake manifold here so no point me showing you this because this is just very simple at the minute there's a couple of screws missing as I can see. I'm trying to see what else is missing. What I'm going to do first is remove this pipe here, which is actually for the intercooler. You can see this one here. Take this off Juba clip. I'm going to unclip this sensor. You just push the wire in the middle and unclip it. That's very simple. Take off Juba clip this side as well and just remove that. So there's no point showing me how to take Juba clips off. And then once I've done that, dog can see the rabbit, sorted. Right, so I've removed the jubilee clips. Just pull these pipes out of the way. Now there should be, ah uh, yeah, there is down here. There should be another uh, screw bolt here, but that's missing. Um, but that's not the end of the world. 
Now what someone has done here, which is kind of good, they've put a rubber piece um, on here because if you remember I did an old video where this was actually rubbed through on the old one and it, was, and it caused a big leak. So with this actually there, that can't happen, which is really good. And remove this pipe, which we can do that in a second once that's up. Not sure what size that is. Yeah, that was right, 16 mil. Oh, that's tight. Of course, I was wondering, because that's the actual engine mount I've just removed there. Because this is hiding a bolt. Yeah. So you don't need to remove that engine mount yet. But this duplicate here is actually hiding the bolt I need to get to. So we'll put that back. Yeah, there we go. That's the bolt that should be on the far side. So, get 10 mil for that. So like I said, 8 mil, just testing you. And what I do suggest when you're doing something like this, keep all the bolts together. So when I take this off, I'm going to put all them bolts back together. This kind of slides up that way. Um, so I know which ones went with which. Now, there we go. So I'm going to put all the clips and the bolts with that. So as we can see now, we can see a bit more. Hope you can on camera. This is the engine mount. We do need to remove that, but not yet. What I need to remove next is the intake. Before I remove the intake, we need to remove this cover. Which is three. 8 mils. Now, again, I'm going to leave them somewhere in a second. Um, but now we can see the intake. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 mils. And then I think they're 13, so I can't remember exactly. And there should be one just down here as well. But again, I'll show you that once I take it off. I've got the EGR valve plus the actual uh, Jubi clip connector here, plus the vacuum lines. We need to remove that to remove that Jubi clip, remove these bolts, and the intake is off. And once I take that off, I'll show you where the bolts are. It's easier to show it when it's off than when it's on. Right, you need to be careful. These are captive bolts, so these can't really come out. They're 10 mil. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five, 11 mils, but they're just bolts. This one, it, sorry, these are nuts. This one's a bolt you can take out. It's up there. I'll get in the way of the camera. There you go. And the rest are bolts. Now, I just leave them sitting off there, but be careful because you can drop them. It's not the end of the world if you do, you can always get them again, but try not. So I'm just going to remove the clamp for the EGR valve. I've taken off the uh, vacuum line for it already. We're going to have a map sensor down there, so don't just rip this off because you can do damage to that. Now there we go, that should be loose, it is. Need to be careful because we've got the bolts on and the map sensor as well. Just get to it. The clip's actually missing off that map sensor, so someone's been here before. Now, when you look at this map sensor here, there should be a silver clip to stop that coming off. That could just fall off, so we're going to have to do something with that before we put it back. But here we go. There it is. There's the bolts inside there. So I'm going to put all this together again to make sure it's all in one place and all together. No harm now. Once you've taken it, I have to give it a clean. Now, to be fair, this actually looks quite good. There is a bit of build up, but not a lot. A um, little bit of wet in there, so you might have to check that out. Could be possibly turbo or something like that. Starting to go, so it's just a good thing to check all this. But yeah, definitely no harm to clean the intake and stuff once you're there. Now, we can kind of see a lot better the pump. 
and it looks really nice and easy once it's there but there's still a lot more stripping we need to take off the starter motor we need to take off these water pipes here because again it's just easier we need to take off the fuel lines the uh, we need to support the engine then and take off the engine frame or the engine support this side so i'll just kind of show you all that so we have the starter motor here that's just two bolts simple enough then we have three bolts and they look like 10 mils to remove these water blinds now obviously when you do that you are going to have to replace you know your water and your fluids and stuff but it makes your life a lot easier we need to get these fuel lines out of the way and then you can see the pump the three bolts to actually take the pump off is fairly straightforward the bolt inside here which i'll show you once we get all this out of the way you do need the special tool there but again um it's not too bad right these next things i'm going to have to remove and i can't really show you if i'm going to get in the way i'm going to remove the three 10 mil bolts for the heater hoses do bear in mind you are going to lose your coolant and your fluid and all that but that's not a big deal then we're going to take off the starter motor then we're going to well i'm going to take off the the fuel pipes first we've got a 10 mil down here and i think there's another 10 mil here somewhere disconnect the jubilee clips here and i can just move them out of the way that gives me room to remove this then i can remove the starter motor once i've got all that done i'll turn the camera back on and we'll be able to actually get to the pump or see it a million times better anyway okay the dog can see the rabbit now as you can see we can see the pump there there's the feed to the common rail now what i would suggest if you've got one of these and you're keeping it you can do a few things now if you want like for example replace your crankshaft sensor even though it's not gone you know depend on the mileage and stuff while you've got all this out no big deal to replace it now your engine temperature sensor and we have the oil uh switch down there as well just because you know to do to rip all that off again to change them is a nightmare so you know it's the sort of thing you can quickly do really easily now what we've done is obviously disconnected the battery here is our starter motor we have a 16 mil bolt and 14 mil heads just two of them this is for our, our wires connect 13 mil and this is for our uh, kicker wire so our, our jump uh, start wire essentially and that's the starter motor removed now what i've got to do is get this on the lift and lock the engine and then we can actually remove this high pressure pump we need the special tool and uh, yeah sort it oh i also removed the cold air intake which was just down into there because it's out of the way um that just clips off right i'll show you a few things down here where we need to lock the engine first but what you need to take off first is the little rubber grommet i'll show you exactly where that is i had made a special tool to go in there and lock but i can't find it but it doesn't really matter so if i get some light on the situation hopefully what i've done is this is the bolt i'm going to use just move it out of the way that's the hole in the flywheel so once you take the start motor off you can actually see what size bolt you need and it actually fits if you look where under the starter motor there's a bolt here for the gearbox if you go in past that it actually fits inside there i'm not going to be able to show you on camera because it's very awkward as you can see and then we need to turn the engine so the bolt goes straight through the engine block and it hits the flywheel and that will actually lock it what i am then going to do is i'm going to put some tipex marks on here just to make sure it doesn't move so once I've got all that set up, we can then take off the engine mount and it's uh, 15 mil and 17 or 18 mil. So there's four bolts there. There's one bolt there and then there's another bolt just across there. And that will get the engine mount off. But when you do that, you need to support the underneath of the engine or the top, however you want to do it. I'm going to support the bottom of the jack so once I get to that stage, we'll turn the camera back on and we'll be good to go. Okay, this is the uh, engine mount. We have a 15 mil bolt here, a, a 19 mil nut and four 15 mil bolts. So that's what you need to take off to get that off. And as you can see, we've got our jack support in our engine. We've actually lifted up our engine. Um, these are the specialist tools you need. I'll just show you that in a second. So just, you can just see it there where my finger is. That is the, the cover we need to take off, which is a 17mm Allen key. 
Now, if you don't have a 17 mil Allen key, what you can actually use is a head of a bolt, um, put a couple of uh, nuts on there, lock them together, and you can actually use the head of a bolt. But if you do have one of these, it just makes your life easier because they're just stronger and easier to use. So I need to get that cover off. Can't share it because obviously once I share it, and, well, once I try, I'm going to be in the way. And then these are the specialist tools you need. So what happens is once you take off the actual cover, you screw this into where the cover was and this, this aligns this second tool. It slots inside. You then screw this into the pulley because you can see the threads are there and what the bolt and that will then lock the pulley and keep it together and then this bolt screws into and it pushes the pump out because the pump is on like a, I'll show you as you can see the pump is on a taper so this tool comes in without doing any damage and it pushes the pump out for you if you try and hit it or get something inside here you're going to just do damage so it's a lot easier to use a specialist tool and like i said these really are very inexpensive they're not that expensive whatsoever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get that set up again i'm not going to be able to show you but you're going to get the idea this screws in first that's the centering tool that goes in screws into the pump and then i just screw this bolt and pushes the pump out all i've got to do is take off the three bolts from the pump and again I can show you that on the old or the new pump that's going in one two three now be aware they are studs so the bolts come off and the studs stay in so just be aware of that Thir three 13 mils again not gonna be able to show that because you can just see there's you can just see one of them there we also need to take off the high pressure pump and we need to disconnect the uh, center to the back of the pump which is just there as well so I'll do that once I've got all them bolts off, I will then screw in this bolt and we'll show you the pump just kind of sliding out. We've also got our engine locked. You just maybe can't see down there, can you? No. But the bolt is in there. It's all Tipex marks and everything. So we are, we're close to getting this baby out. Okay, you can see the tool is in place. This is the outside collar. This is the inside collar. This is what's going to actually push the pump out for us. And the way you take, or the way you put that on, First, you need to take off this cover, which we were talking about, which is the 17 mil Allen key. Next, you have to take off this bolt, which is 21 mil, and then that allows you to put the tool on. Now, what I've got to do is disconnect the high pressure pump, disconnect the sensor, and take off the three 13 mil bolts. I'm going to do that, and again, I can't show you that on camera because I'm going to get in the way. Once I've done that, we'll push the pump out and uh, it's out. Now, I know this is a really bad angle, but it's the only thing I can do because my tripod isn't tall enough to get inside this. So here is the pump. I've got a 19 mil socket and ratchet on the other end of the bolt. So all I'm going to do now is just screw this. There we go. That kind of did it, I think. There we go. Hopefully you can see. Now, believe me, that maybe seems simple and it is with a special tool but you try and do that there we go without it you're going to struggle and possibly lose the timing so there we go one pump out lovely now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure nothing has moved because if it has i'm in trouble I shouldn't have done because everything is in place but you can never tell so check all my marks this high pressure line, I couldn't get the heater plug thing. Oh, there it was. <laughs> I couldn't get it off because that was in the way. Now I can kind of move that a bit more out of the way and get the pump out. But there we go. So once I get this pump out, make sure everything's okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I know it looked really easy with that tool because I just kind of turned it and it kind of snapped in the sense of not snapped anything. We put that much pressure on, it released the pump instantly. You need that. Try and do it any other way, you're just going to damage the pump because, like I said, it's a chamfered shaft. See that fast? That's what she said. So it has to come off, you know, nice. This is the old pump. They do have a problem with leaking here, and it's not really just a simple case of getting new seals and stuff because these are complicated inside. This is a second hand pump because that's what the customer wanted. So, you know, second hand pump is a second hand pump at the end of the day. There's no real guarantees with it. There is a seal down there, so that seal's okay. I'm going to put all this back together. No need for me to show you how to do it, he says. It's as simple as that, he says. Well, if you were able to remove everything, even after watching this video, 
and you're looking for installation instructions and I quote installation is a universal removal it really is as simple as that sorted once I get it all back together we're gonna see if it starts this was still producing pressure just not enough I think around 140 bar where it should be I think these are just over 300 bar I can't remember I think it's around three something can't remember off the top of my head anyway but you need at least 300 bar to start a modern diesel common rail injection and that pressure has to build up instantly and a lot of the pressure is just leaking out this one so let's shove this pump back in and uh, yeah let's get going just a quick tip as you're putting this bolt back on the pump the last thing you want it to do is fall off and go inside the timing chain because you will have a bad day so i've just put some tape around it it can't go anywhere it just means i can get in there and uh, not have to put any risks sorted the new pump is in kind of Okay, now we've more or less got everything back together I know I'm gonna get grief because yes I know I should have put some sort of tissue or rags in there you should do it I just didn't but you should do it so we've got the pump arm we've got the starter motor arm we've got the pipes arm we've got the high pre well we've got the feed lines into the pump we've got the high pressure line on um, we have I think that's essentially it. yes the earth for the um, on the start motor remember that the start motor wires two so it's just a case of putting the intake manifold back on um, and the pipes and we're ready to start this bad boy and see if it starts technically I should be able to start it now really because I want to make sure there's nothing leaking so I think I'll do that just because once I get everything on I can't see the pump properly now bear in mind I don't have the map sensor on or the air intake temperature sensor connected. I don't have the EGR valve connected, but it should still start. So let me just prime up the pump because there's a low pressure pump and a high pressure pump. I'm gonna turn the ignition on and off a few times just to prime it up. And then we're gonna start this and see what happens and what it sounds like. Sorted. Okay, just holding my phone, hands in the ignition. I primed the pump two or three times. Let's see. Hey, there we go. Just want to check all my lines, make sure nothing's leaking. I'm going to do all this off camera. I just turn this off now because there's not really water or anything in it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure nothing leaks. Uh, remember, I haven't got. I, I did lose water, so I'm only going to leave it starting for a couple of minutes. Just make sure nothing leaks. Make sure everything's okay before I put everything else back on. But it sounds good. Now you really do have to be careful because this is like a big vacuum. You do not want anything loose or anything because if it goes in there, that's it. Engine gone. Right, okay. We've got everything put back together. Here's the old pump. <clears throat> I'm just going to start it now. Be aware that when you start it, and obviously I didn't have all the sensors plugged in, you know, you can cause an engine light to come on. So just be aware of that. But what I'm going to do now is start it, make sure there's no engine light comes on or make sure it starts and does everything it needs to do and there we go we have no engine lights on um, and there we go people it starts it sounds good just give it a bit of a rev make sure it does rev Sounds good. Now what I do have left to do is um, top up the antifreeze we lost, bleed the system, and then we are good to go. But that's it people, that's how to replace a pump in one of these TD4 engines. Sorted. So look, hope it helps. Please like, share and subscribe as always and comment. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.